Hi, I'm Helen Kaler. I am a landscape painter and fiber artist, and I'm here in my studio. Um, I am going to begin by showing you how I work with my landscape paintings. Um, in the last two years, I've been using a particular way of working with the oil paint. Um, I paint on linen, which I cover with a, a dark gesso. A lot of painters know that canvas is gessoed, not many of them use a very dark gesso, and a photograph that I use for reference. I don't copy the photograph, but I use it for reference or composition ideas. This is one I started a while back. It's a photograph of cedar trees in a marsh in Brewster, and um, I'm just, it's mostly done. I'm just sort of working on some of the dark areas here um, to sort of identify define the cedar trees a little bit more. This is a soft focus painting. Um, I use oil paint and a, a wax medium. It's a cold wax medium. It's um, kind of like the texture of peanut butter. And um, it has a, a luminescent quality, um, sort of satiny look to it. And um, I'll just work on an area here. I think I want a little bit more dark in this area, so I'm trying to define this, this tree here. This, this side seems fairly well developed, and I've been working on this side more in a... Sort of the way this goes is putting in a little bit of a dark... Um, use black, but I mix it with different colors. So this is kind of a dark, greeny, bluey black here for the shadows. And put in a fair amount of that. And um, pick up a brush. I use these um, really cheap brushes that you can get at Walmart. They're painter's brushes. But they have just the right amount of stiffness. And this is, and I'm going to sort of scumble in this dark area right here so that it doesn't look like the edges are too sharp. And it kind of gives it a soft, misty quality. Um, my palette, I use a very limited palette. Um, a couple of different yellows, um, two reds, two blues, white, black, and I mix all the colors that I'm using here in this painting. If you use complementary colors like green and red, if you use like a very soft red, it'll make the green stand out more. If you use a very soft green will make the red stand out more. So there's a lot of effort in my paintings to mix color. I do like using a very simple subject matter because I, I want to put more of the emphasis on the color and the composition. So I'm not putting in a lot of detail. It's kind of more about the mood and the atmosphere and the color. Um, I had gone to Mass Art, Mass College of Art yeah, when I was in my mid-40s, and at the time we were encouraged to paint using, um, not using a medium to thin the paint. Because of safety reasons, we were encouraged to just use um, the paint straight out of the tube or mix with a little linseed oil. So consequently, I, I used a lot of thick paint in my paintings. This one, I, I may have even done with a palette knife. There's, there's a lot of texture. If you touch it, you can feel the roughness of the paint. It sticks out. And um, I painted this way for a while, and I never really loved the way the paint looked. I, um, I had a, a hard time when it was thin. I didn't like the way it looked on the canvas. When it was thick, it seemed too gooey. So I kind of had a love-hate relationship with oil painting and, until I did learn how to paint with the lost wax medium and the, um, the linen. I like using the linen because I just like the texture of it more so than canvas. I always felt like I had to really cover up the canvas because I didn't like the way it looked. And, um, and I, I like the silky look that the, that the cold wax medium gives. It's kind of a satiny sheen to the painting. I, um, here's, here's the obligatory Nobska Lighthouse, everybody paints that, but I decided to put a twist on it. I photographed it from the back, from the shore, um, shore drive, surf drive side, and at sunset, so that 
the lighthouse, which normally seems to appear over here, is actually behind this building, and I just, I did it in silhouette. And for a sunset painting, which can become overly sweet um, with the colors, I tried to dial back the colors as much as I could, um, making them grayer and smokier, so it wouldn't be. And this one I um, experimented with trying to sharpen the edges a little bit more. Um, you can tell that some of the some of my paintings are very, very soft focused edge, but I was trying to see what it was like to sharpen the edges more and still have it be somewhat soft. So that is this one. Um, I have been enjoying the idea of painting dark sunset type colors. Um, this was actually an experiment of getting the setting sun was just peeking out from behind these trees. And I, a lot of painters say you must not paint from photographs, but sometimes you just want to catch a, a time of day, a particular moment, and you can't sit there for an hour or a half an hour and have that moment be there all the time the way you want it. So taking a photograph, going out for walks, taking a photograph is, is for me a very a good way to go about this. And as I said before, I don't copy the photograph. I, I just try to use it for inspiration and color and composition. Sometimes I will combine two photographs. This was actually a combination of two photographs of these cedar trees out um, on Little Island in West Falmouth because I could not get the right combination of trees just in one photograph. I had to like, combine two. I believe these three were in one photograph and then I joined the second photograph here and did these two. Even though they were in the same place, I couldn't get them in the same photograph. Um, I really enjoy being outside, um, and I live on a lake, and my neighbor and I will go kayaking around the lake at various times of the year. This was a fall, about two years ago in the fall. I don't know, the issues that face me are, you know, how sharp or how soft do I make the edges? Autumn paintings have a lot of color in them. Perhaps they get too colorful, so uh, it was really a grayish pond. The pond was sort of a gray, gray, purpley gray. It was an overcast day. Um, so that does contrast with the, with the bright oranges in here. And um, I put in a little bit of detail, a little bit of information here about the tree trunks, just to sort of ground the image. And again, it, Another challenge that I face is often between one tree and the next, the light and the shadow. Now, how sharp do I make that? How much do I go in and out where the branches are? How much do I make it a solid shape? Um, those, are, those are the issues that, that I'm dealing with when I'm doing these paintings. But I'll, each one of these paintings is really about a nice, ex a really enjoyable experience that I've had outside walking in the cranberry bogs off Turner Road, um, going around my pond, taking walks to the marshy areas. That's, that's what I enjoy. So I get all, all the benefits. I get to go out walking with my dog, taking photographs, and then coming home and painting pictures. I was standing out there for a long time taking a lot of pictures because the light, the sun sets just like right behind this low spot and it shoots the light and shadow across the trees. and. It was just that moment that I wanted to, to capture. And also these trees that sort of lean out this way a little bit more catch the light as well. So that was, that was really challenging to paint. Just the right amount of branch, dark. Um, I, it was another earlier one, so that was challenging. I have left behind some of the um, dark gesso here. Sometimes that can just be part of the picture. Along with the painting, I like to do fiber art. The painting for me is physically demanding, mentally demanding, and um, I can't do it all day. I can do it about three hours, four hours a day when, when I'm really um, working hard. But I also I like being productive in the evening as well. So uh, it's sort of the downtime from painting, I like to do fiber art. And here I have a piece that got me started. Um, with the idea that I can make interesting pictures out of embroidery. I made this crazy quilt at, at a time when it was difficult for me to paint and uh, basically sat in the 
down with a, an embroidery book, even though I had taken a class many years before, and tried out all the stitches I could and all the possibilities for making um, pictures out of out of these um, imp these crazy quilt squares. And I had no idea when I was starting how it would turn out, but it turned out well enough that it gave me the confidence to continue um, with more ideas. My, my next idea was to take photographs of actual things like gardens and um, print them on a fabric. Quilters often use this. It's a fabric that comes with a plastic backing and you can take a digital photograph and print right with your inkjet printer onto cloth and you'll get an exact duplicate of the photograph. And I did that. This, is, this happens to be the second one that I d am working on with lilies. And I'm basically covering every possible square inch with different kinds of embroidery stitches in the colors that replicate the photograph. Um, these take a long time to do, maybe eight months or nine months, and by the time I'm near the end, I'm, I'm sort of already brimming with other ideas. And so the next idea I had was to make an image that wasn't just a photograph, it was part of a painting that I had designed myself. and. Um, and to make it so that I wouldn't have to embroider after every inch, uh, over every inch. So I don't know if you can get that. It may have glare on it, but that was a painting I did with six squares in it, with kind of an abstract design in each square. And so I took photographs of each image, um, adjusted the color in Adobe Photoshop, sized them all the same, and printed them on fabric again. And when they're when they're printed just on the fabric, they look like this, just a picture on fabric. And then I selectively embroidered different areas, um, such as here I did couching with two colors of turquoise and violet, maybe some buttonhole stitches around here, um, French knots, chain stitches, and made separate little pictures out of each image. And I have three more to go before I'm finished with this whole project. So from, from the tree, I've decided that knitting and shrinking the knitted um, rectangle in a washing machine to make it a, a like felt, basically, um, is a nice way to make backgrounds. So I began since to uh, think of other images that I wanted to make that way. And this is a garden, but you can also have a kind of a cross section of what it might look like under the ground, uh, underneath the garden with rocks and buried bones. And it's kind of a, a fantasy idea um, of the interaction between what might be under the ground and above the ground in the garden. And so I have knitted and then shrunk the background, and then needle felted onto it different tones of roving, which is un, um, unspun wool, and then embroidered and beaded on top of that. So I have a variety of textures and uh, surfaces and colors. I'm continuing in this vein. This is another need. Uh, knit and felted stripes, which I have needle felted over. And the image is of cedar trees that are actually under the water. It's kind of a fantasy based on the discovery at South Cape Beach of um, the tree trunks of an ancient forest that got uncovered by a storm last year. And I just imagined this forest under the water. And this is a small piece which will actually is kind of now a mock-up for a larger piece that 